Welcome everyone to this edition of the Wayback Tech. We're going to take the Pentium Pro and we're going to benchmark it with Quake 2 and Quake 3. Plus we're going to find out what's the best operating system to use with the Pentium Pro processor. That coming up next right here on the Wayback Tech. So here's where we are right now with the Pentium Pro project. Um, I've got uh, two 256 meg um, 50 nanosecond ECC uh, EDO memory in this in right now. Uh, I had a gig in it. It works fine with a gig, uh, but it takes forever to count up to a gig of RAM. So for testing purposes, I'm only running a half a gig in this, which is more than enough for what I'm running here. It's way overkill, but I like overkill. Um, I did run into a problem with this. If anybody's never messed with a Pentium Pro before, at least with this particular motherboard, the fourth PCI slot at the bottom of this board is a slave slot and it is non DMA bust, which means I can't run any of my PCI video cards network cards, sound cards, what have you, SCSI card in that slot. So I'm limited to three slots that I can use, not four. So I put an AUS64 in the bottom, got my SCSI card, network card, and video card in this. Now I'm running a GeForce 4 MX4000 PCI video card. This is one that I've had for a while and it works just fine for this system. More than enough horsepower in that video card for this Pentium Pro. So, I'm going to turn your attention to the screen. I have changed over to Windows NT4 workstation. This is the biggest thing I can tell anybody that's going to do a Pentium Pro. Windows NT4 workstation is a must. I tried to run 2000 and XP on this computer and it was horribly slow. Gaming improved significantly running with Windows NT4 workstation. So, that's a big key. If you want to get the best performance out of the Pentium Pro processor, Windows NT4 has special coding for the P6 Pentium Pro processor. I don't know if the Windows 2000 is so bogged down with code or if it's not optimized for the Pentium Pro, which would be my guess since Intel changed the P6 core a little bit when they did the Pentium 2 uh, I'm sure they changed, updated some of the instruction sets they did the, uh, changed the way the caching was handled, things like that so this is the test what does Quake 3 and Quake 2 do with NT4? NT4 does come with DirectX 3.0 and a lot of these older games are only DirectX 3.0 compliant. If you run them on 6, 7, 8, or 9, which I've tried, especially 9, they go all kinds of wonky on you. So let's get to the benchmarking right now. Okay, for this benchmark test, I'm just going to run Quake 3. Uh, I'm going to run the standard demo 001 demo test on this and uh, maybe we'll run the Quaver, but I think the Quaver is going to be <laughs> quite a lot. So let's just see what this does. And I do have the sound turned off. I'm going to have to return the sound off here actually. I don't have the speakers hooked up right now. Oops. Now one little trick about Time Demo that I don't know if anybody knows. When you first set up Time Demo 1 on Quake, you do not have to type that in again. Once you set it, it's good to go until you set that back to zero. So if you run multiple benchmarks, the only thing you have to do is type Demo, Demo 001. Now if I had the Quaver installed on here, I would type demo quaver, 
and hit enter but we just have the standard one on here right now so let's go ahead and see how this runs The only downside to the Pentium Pro, and it doesn't seem to matter whether or not I run the onboard IDE or a ATA-133 controller, it just doesn't seem to load up very fast. A lot of data to process here, I guess. Now I'm running this at standard normal graphic settings uh, and I have it set to vertex instead of a light map because it is a little bit faster. So let's see what we've got here. Almost 33 frames a second. Now that's quite playable. No it's not 60, no it's not 150, but that's quite playable. Definitely respectable. So I'll show you the difference here if I kick this up to uh, or actually if I just go to uh, I guess I'll have to use the mouse on this, Jesus Christ light map there is definitely a significant drop in frame rate again we don't need to reset the time demo because it's already set up to record this demo and, and, and uh, keep track of the how many frames per second we gathered And I will say this, I haven't had this good of frame rates on anything other than NT4 with this Pentium Pro. I've almost doubled my frames per second, especially in Quake 2. Quake 3 not so much, because I was still doing low 20s, high teens, low 20s frame rate with uh, Quake 3 with uh, Windows 2000. XP was a little bit worse, but... Uh, I definitely hit my, my target though, I actually exceeded my target a little bit. I was trying to uh, match the frames per second rate that I saw on a, on a uh, message board and I actually uh, have, have equaled that or exceeded that with this setup. 27.9, so we dropped uh, a handful of frames, or about 5 frames per second. So that's one thing to do, is if you got one of these old systems, uh, put it on vertex lighting. Uh, you know, unless you really have to have that special lighting effect, I, for me, Vertex is fine. So let's just see what happens here if we set it to high quality, 800 by 600. Let's kick up the texture detail. I'm going to cheat and use Vertex on this Ge geometric. Set that to high. Let's just see what happens here.
30.5. <laughs> that's uh, that's better than I thought that was going to be, actually. I was thinking 25, but uh, wow, that's pretty good. So, I'm going to pause this video and we'll come back and run Quake 2. Okay, so here we are at Quake 2. This is just uh, default settings, 64480, nothing fancy. Let's take a look and see how this does. <clears throat> I already know we're going to be in the 40s because I've already ran this test before. Forty-six point four. Damn. The uh, message board I saw. I believe said they were running 42 frames per second with a pair of Pentium Pro 200s and they didn't specify what cache version of Pentium Pro that was. I'll just show you my settings here. So let's go ahead and kick up that uh, screen size. Now this is just the vanilla Quake 2. This is not a patched version at all in any way. Again, you don't have to do the time demo thing again. Just type in the map and the map name. Forty-six point six. So let's see what happens if we run this, say, 800 by 600. Forty-six point six. It's just for shits and giggles. What happens if we kick this baby up to twelve eighty? What do you think's gonna happen? I'm kind of curious. I'm guessing mid thirties. What do you say? I haven't run this, so I don't know. I haven't gotten this. So I usually stop the enter by six hundred because I figure it's probably not gonna run very good any higher than that, but let's see here. Mid-30s maybe? I'll be surprised though if it's still 40s. Depends on how good this uh, MX4000 chip is. Forty-five point five. Wow. So that uh, definitely tells us that. Uh, let me just zoom in on that. Definitely tells us that the video card is in no way a hindrance to this performance. Uh, <coughs> that's pretty cool. You know, forty-five and a half frames per second at twelve eighty. That's better than they were getting back in the day. I, I'll tell you what, they, I, I looked at some of those old reviews and you kick these, video, these old uh, TNT2 PCI cards up to uh, 1280, man did they crawl. So that's, you know, if you're gaming in 1280, uh, that's a very, very playable frame rate. 30, 30 is usually considered the, the optimal play uh, frame rate for for get for good gameplay and so there's you know 15 frames to play with there per second so that's uh that's pretty impressive all right so that will conclude the uh benching of the Pentium pro project uh i got some few more ideas planned for this 
But that will be for another video series. I hope you guys like this, and I hope you guys learned something about how to optimize your Pentium Pro. Take care, everyone.